What's up, you guys? Ah, good morning. It is, uh, what's that, Friday morning. Uh, what is that, 26th of January. Uh, we are currently on the southbound I-15, uh, kind of getting toward the lower end of the uh, Cajon Pass. Approaching the 215 freeway coming up here. Yeah, on the what you call it the four area, just north of San Bernardino. Uh, as you guys might see. Alright, so just kind of FYI, I guess we're what are we doing this load? Uh, we got actually two deliveries to make with this load. This uh, this video is just gonna cover the first of those two. That'll be at a place called Dairy Fresh Produce or whatever it's called in uh, Ontario. Now this place is pretty close to the truck stops in Ontario. They are the TA and Petro there. Uh, it's on Rockefeller Avenue, I think is what it's called, if I remember right. It's, uh, it's real simple actually if you, if you uh, because the truck stops are on uh, Wasty Road. Yeah, right by on either side of Millican Avenue. Um, if you go south on Millican Avenue from there, from either of those truck stops, and you go underneath the railroad tracks there, or right on the other side of the tracks is a street called Airport Drive or Airport Road. Now, Airport Road, you can take it over to the east, and it'll uh, I believe that's the same one that turns into Slover Avenue and and Fontana. Uh, after you get over the other side, uh, I think on the other side of Etiwanda Avenue, um, on the east side of 15. But, uh, but anyway, you don't go that far. You actually just go one single block east of Milliken and turn right and go right down that street there. And on the left side will be my, my customer. Um, I don't really think I'm going to be there very long. I don't know for sure. I know there's going to be a lumper fee and stuff from what I've read on the uh, reviews. Probably get a little bit more details on that uh, as we get in the area there. See, I will have a bit of a, a slight traffic. It might possibly have a little bit of a traffic delay there once I'm ready to get off the freeway or almost there. Uh, it's kind of a, yeah. why not? I'm going to tell you right now, uh, Looking at the map, it looks like the easy way to go would be to get on 10 West and then get off at Milliken. But my experience though with uh, between the 10 and 15 interchange and Milliken, it's, it can be a pain in the ass getting moved over to the right to get to the exit itself for Milliken. So I tend to not like to go that way if I don't absolutely need to be that way. And, I'm actually considering taking the Rupa Avenue exit from I-15, which is the only exit that is between I-10 and uh, 60 freeway. Uh, but you see the, the traffic delay there, which makes me wonder if I really want to go that way. So, I don't know. We're, I'm running ahead of schedule anyway. Uh, I went ahead and left earlier because I was expecting there to be traffic delays that would cause me to get there around 7 anyway. I have an 8 a.m. appointment there. I don't think I'm going to be able to check in before 7 though. So, I might end up just parking on the street. I have to park on the street anyway when I go to check in. Uh, but I figure, yeah, I might just park on the street there and wait whatever amount of time is necessary if it comes down to it. Probably be there around 6.40, 6.45 perhaps. So not like I'm going to be waiting that long before I can check in, even if that is the case. Alright, uh, that's what's going on. So now I guess we can talk about um, what you missed between the last, the last uh, video I did and this one. Uh, see, I did like three videos in a row that kind of covered the split sleeper. Don't worry, I'm not going to beat that dead horse. The second of those three was the last actual pickup delivery vlog you, you saw me do. And that was a... I believe it was a pickup at Grimway Farms in Arvin, California. 
moved over by Bakersville. So that load ended up going to Paul's Valley, Oklahoma. Um, I ended up making it across 40, um, good, uh, let's see, yeah, I had good weather all the way across for the most part, but now I ended up taking that one, I ended up going, going to Altus, Oklahoma, and uh, stopped over there for the day. Because I, I wanted to uh, meet up with my son and his uh, his mom and stepdad. Um, like I mentioned in the other video, uh, his AirPods got left at my house, or really, uh, his brother stole them. So I got them back to him, and then uh, his brother hooked him up with cupcakes. So, yeah, I got that, and then ended up just beating up for... Uh, for a bit, for, uh, well, I'm not a fan of it, but, Whataburger. Being a Whataburger, sorry dude, I can't do anything for you. I can't move over. Um, anyway, yeah, I don't know why people uh, rave so much about Whataburger. Every time I go there, there's just nothing remotely special about them damn burgers. Um, the bun is definitely not that fresh. Uh, it, I mean, it, it kind of seemed like it came out of a freezer and was uh, smashed down a little bit before I before it got to my bag. <laughs> so, and yeah, it just yeah, I, I won't say it's bad. It's just nothing special to me. Uh, I can't believe that people think that that's actually better than in and out Burger. Like, are you freaking kidding me? <laughs> anyway, I'm going to get back on you guys here from Texas. Because, uh, I mean, no, uh, no disrespect, but you guys have bad taste of burgers. Stick to your barbecue, okay? You guys do tend to have good barbecue. Uh, maybe among the best in the country, but... Now, leave the burgers for other uh, other areas that are uh, know what the hell they're doing with those. <laughs> Alright, anyway. Uh, after that, now I ended up staying overnight there because for one, they, uh, they took a uh, because I had to wait longer for my son to get out of school before they could come over to uh, meet up with me. I actually got there early in the morning like 6, 6.30 in the morning, whatever, after running from, uh, I think, Dancing Eagle Travel Plaza in Casablanca, New, uh, New Mexico, yeah. And, uh, but, now, when I was in Altus, also waiting for them, the, the roads there in you know, Oklahoma City region got all iced up. A snowstorm went through there. I don't think it snowed a heck of a lot, but it, the roads got really icy, and it's like, you know, I, I can deal with ice, but I don't want to be in the, yeah, but if there's traffic around, you know, there was too much, there was a lot more risk that someone's going to slide into me or something, or, you never know, I could even lose control and uh, maybe slide into somebody else trying to keep my truck moving uh, the right direction. Uh, yeah, that's always a possibility, too. Um... Yeah, it wasn't really worth the risk, and my load wasn't due until like 8 in the morning there in Paul's Valley anyway, on the following days. And it's only 130 miles from the, the truck stop in Altus that I was at in uh, Paul's Valley. So, it's, you know, it's a couple hour drive, just a hair more perhaps if you add in the free trip time and going through some towns and shit. God, one thing I, I can't stand about going there when I go that particular route is because uh, I usually take highways US 62 over to Lawton, Oklahoma, go west on 44, about three miles or whatever it is, and then go east on State Route 7, take that out to the town of Marlowe, and then get on northbound US 81 or whatever that highway is right there. It's a US highway. And then go about four miles or whatever it is north into downtown Marlowe and make a right turn there onto State Route 29. 
Now going across 29, I've been across that road many times. Uh, but why is it every damn time I go there, I go that way, it seems there's always someone who doesn't want to do the speed limit. It's a 65 mile an hour zone all the way across, except for the couple of towns there. What's that? Uh, um, El Eldridge or what, Elmore, Elmore City? Yeah. And what's that other town just before it? Whatever. Um, but anyway, yeah, this, I got so down by this big guy who did not want to do more than 60, and you're driving at night and have, you know, hills and stuff. I mean, uh, it's, I could see headlight auras. Sometimes there were times where, a couple times where I probably could have gotten around them, but I'm you know, on the I was on the heavy side, and it, it takes time to get up to speed to, to get around the guy, even if I can get the speed. But um, yeah, and then you see headlight auras uh, from the other side of the hills, and you think they're right right next to the top of the hill, but then they might not be even that close to it. Now uh, it, it's frustrating. And yeah, and it seems like every time I get on that damn highway, there's always some knucklehead you know, wanting to um, do at least 10 miles an hour less than the freaking speed limit. It drives me nuts sometimes, so. Uh, it's not exactly every time I go that way, but it's, it's more common than I'd like to, uh, to see. All right, anyway, though, I made that delivery. Um, didn't get out of there until noon. Actually, I had to wait a couple hours once after I got there before I got a door assignment. I uh, got there around 7 a.m. or so. Docked in a little bit after 9 a.m. and then they called me to get my bills right at noon or you know just a couple minutes after noon. And oh my, yeah. So I was the very last truck out of there. And so that always feels weird when you when you get it when you show up there and then. Uh, you know, the first so like 20 or so doors are full of trucks. Every single dock door is occupied by a truck. And even a few, like four, like three or four other trucks waiting in the kind of their staging spot area there, waiting, waiting for a dock door. And then I get in the door and I'm literally the very last person out of there. Yeah, you can see on my TikTok channel, I posted a video of that. Uh, where I was literally the last one out there. Then I ended up going over to the Loves and uh, right across the freeway from there, hoping I'd get a shower, but then it turned out showers and restrooms were down because apparently uh, there was some kind of a frozen water line somewhere in the city that supplies them. They had water, but it was low pressure. It was not enough for them to, to supply everything that needed uh, to be supplied, so. Yeah, I got screwed out of getting my shower there. Um, after that, you know what? Um, I'll probably finish the rest of that story on the next video. I think uh, maybe that because we're not too far away from I-10, and I, I wanted, I do want to try to keep these videos somewhat short. I just have to try and remember that you know, we we stopped talking about. Uh, yeah, everything up to here. Um, at the point where I just finished that Falls Valley delivery. Now, and I guess on my next video, perhaps, uh, yeah, I'll talk about the experience of getting this, getting to this load, and yeah, you know, where it came from and all that. So, all right, so yeah, we're, uh, we're already past Foothill Boulevard here. We only got uh, I think Fourth Street next, and then the Ten Freeway. So I'm going to go ahead and, uh, so we can kind of keep the video a little bit shorter for you guys. Uh, we'll go ahead and high speed the rest of the way over, okay? <laughs> Alright guys, we're going to go ahead and get off at Harupa Avenue, or Harupa Street, I mean. Um, you know, why don't I go ahead and tell you guys where the load came from? Because I'm sure you're probably wondering, well, what the hell are you delivering here or something? Uh, you might not see the other video, perhaps. I don't know. Uh, all right, so the load got picked up from Vital Farms in Sapupa, Oklahoma. 
Yeah, right there by the G, uh, not far from the JCT mothership. Um, all right, so I talked about how I ended up at the Loves in Falls Valley after I delivered. Didn't get my shower, couldn't get washed out there either, so I ended up, uh, I ended up running up to Oklahoma City, got washed out over there, and then back up to Sepulpa, but before I even left Falls Valley, I saw the pre-plan and said I was supposed to be there like a quarter to two in the evening, in the afternoon or something, 1345, and it was already just after 1300, and it's uh, a, a little bit more than two hour drive, slide over. I need to be in the outer lane here. Alright. Uh, let's see. Now, we might have been able to use the inner lane to make the turn without encroaching in this lane, but I didn't want to take any chances. Alright, good. This guy's waiting. Alright. Uh, all right, so we're gonna come west on Harupa till we get to Milliken, and then we're, we're gonna do a spiral route. It's gonna be all right turns. There is a uh, left turn that I can make from the south end of Rockefeller to to get over there, but I'd rather make a left turn into their driveway than a right. More room to work with. So I'm gonna come in, uh, come around, um, come up to uh, Airport Drive, and uh, come in that way. Alright, anyway, though, on my way up 35, it turned out there was a, I guess, an overturned truck. I never saw it, but uh, right when I was getting into the, what's that town called? Uh, starts with a P. It's not far south of Norman in Moore, Oklahoma. You know, or, or, you know what is it? Norman, I think, is where University of Oklahoma is. Uh, yeah, just a little bit south of there. Now, yeah, whatever that town is, starts with a P. Um, I can't remember. I, for some reason, I can't remember the exact name of it, but I know it starts with a P. I know I can tell you it was like my uh, exit 95, whatever, but just north of there, there was an overturned truck and the road was blocked or something, it sounded like. They had a couple of Uh, yeah, they had a couple of wreckers over there already uh, in position, getting ready to get them out of the, wherever they were at. Um, so it was causing a like, you know, it was going to be like 20 something minutes longer to go that way than it was to take a different way. Is it Purcell? Is that the name of the town? I think. I don't know. Um, I had to look. Let me zoom back in. All right. Yeah, we're gonna make the right turn at uh, airport, which should be the light right there. Yeah, we can also turn on this street right here and then make the left, you know, or even make the, uh, the right here on, oh, this is Santana. Okay. Yeah, either Santana or uh, uh, airport. Whichever, doesn't matter. Uh, anyway, though, yeah, I had, uh, had to work my way, I ended up working my way around that. Went down into Purcell, we'll just call it that, and got on US 77 northbound and then took that up to Highway 9. Went back to the west across Highway 9, which goes right along the south edge of University of Oklahoma, and got back on 35 then. Um, but also, before I even left, uh, no, I want the other. Uh, man, I could have made that turn too, but I want to make a left into their street. I mean, into their yard. Alright, so I knew I couldn't make it to the ship run time, so I just told my dispatch, hey, uh, um, I asked them if they could find out from the planner if the planner will load me late or if the planner has anybody else available who can uh, pick the load up and bring it back to the yard for me. So, about a few minutes later, I get a call, I mean, on a, a message back saying, uh, hey, yeah, it'll be here in the yard. It'll be getting dropped here in the yard about, uh, about two and a half hours from now. And it turned out it was 
Yeah, around the same time I was going to be there. In fact, I was only 15 miles away from our terminal when uh, the load info came across my uh, my ELD saying that it was, you know, which means that the other person had dropped it and uh, it was ready for me to pick up now. So it was really good timing. All right, so we have several trucks over here already. Let's see. I've been over here in the area before. There's a Domino's Pizza DC right over here on the left side. Um, gonna have to, say, you know, I might have to overshoot or something. And I don't know, maybe there'll be room on the other side of that truck up there. But I, I have my doubts. I'll find out here. All right. Looks like we're clear on the railroad tracks. There's a car up here. Okay. Oh yeah, actually, yeah, I don't know. That's no parking. All right, so not a big deal. I think it's this building right here that I want. Yeah, DPI Specialty Foods. So I might just have to circle back around when it's. Uh, when I'm able. Yeah. Lots of trucks here. Yeah, I don't know. Man, is there anywhere I can park over here? Fuck. This guy had parked further up, I'd be able to get in the space behind him, but oh how about this? Ah, right, yeah, we can do a parallel parking here for you guys. Dock door assignment now. We're uh, going to be docking in to door 30. Uh, we're going to have to PC back over there though. Uh, get back to a little bit more there. Alright. Going to have to circle around. Uh, oh, he's doing the same thing I did when I got to my truck this morning. turn here onto Santa Ana and then go back down uh, airport and make the left turn into their driveway it's uh yeah I, I don't I didn't notice if they have two gates open I know they have more than one driveway but I didn't happen to notice if the, the north driveway was open I know the the south one is but I don't want to have to approach from the blind side if I don't need to. So ideally, I want to hit the north uh, driveway if it's uh, if it's not it's closed. What are you doing? 
you doing, dude? You don't even make, need to make that wide a turn. Knucklehead, you could have made that turn from your own lane. <laughs> it went all the way into the uh, next lane over, the middle lane, and <laughs> yeah, overkill just a little bit much there, dude. back in the lot. And I know Doc, I think door 34 was the one that's closest to them. There's a brown building over there in the lot. Um, go up to the west side of it. <coughs> oh, well, there's, there's steps on both sides on the south end of the building. Go to the one that's on the west end. Uh, go up the steps on the west end and there's a window right there. That's where you check in at. Um, yeah, after I got through checking in, I was noticing, I want to say door 34 was the one that's closest to that building. So I'm going to be pretty close to there. Might, uh, I don't know, might be, could end up being a possibly tricky docking. We'll find out though. can use this uh, yeah this entrance right here is what I want and it even says truck entrance right here okay said when you uh, get docked in to let the lumper know that you're there uh, all the reviews said go ahead and open your doors and uh, bump the dock and all that crap. Oh, there's all kinds of room here. Thanks to the fact nobody's there, let me... All right. Just to make sure I have my tandems will clear those two guys there. Shut up. Yeah, now this can be a tight docking, but uh, the fact nobody's over here on this side, this is gonna make it way easier. All right, let me get my doors open.
could have hit it in one spot, uh, one move, but I didn't. Yeah, I, I, I let the trailer run away a little too fast. God, it's hard to tell where I need to be. a little bit more to the right. I'm on. I'm not far off, but it's just a tad more to the left than I think it should be, and I don't want to be having issues with the dock plate not squaring up. All right, now we look like we're good. Yeah, look like what I really want is to be centered between the two yellow lines. that it'll be a really long time here. It's only like not even 500 pounds of eggs and or actually salt I think it was at this one. So now let me get the wheel chalk in and all that. Um, okay I think they already have the bills. Alright guys, uh, we are done uh, with this facility for the most part. Um, actually, we're not done here yet, but I was told by the lumper dock out and park on the street. And, uh, let's see. And then uh, come back when I'm ready to pay the lumper fee. It's uh, $87.00 what they quoted me for one pallet basically one or two pallets or whatever it was of um, nothing but butter um, let's, let's park it right here or no that's a white yeah that's a painted curb there even though it's faded out so let's find a better spot There's still a spot over here. Yeah, I look like I can still park over here. All right, so we'll put it right here. I think it's the same spot we were in earlier. Oh, even better. This guy just pulled out, so it'll make my uh, my parallel parking a lot easier now. Good. Okay, I'll just pull forward straight ahead. No need to do a, a, a standard parallel parking maneuver, and then if that's the case. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and end this video for here. Out uh, here, though, it's let's say $87. It is um, almost nine o'clock. Yeah, not, about ten minutes before nine is when I got told. So, um, it's had an 8 a.m. appointment time, so it really wasn't too bad here. Um, so, all right, so as soon as I get the lumper fee paid, we'll be out of here. Um, they'll have another video for you guys when we get to um, Ramona, California, okay? That is a couple hour drive from here. Actually, a little more than two hour drive for me in a truck, uh, but roughly two hour drive. Uh, depending, uh, a few different routes that I'm considering. Uh, there's one particular I'm probably going to prefer based on my personal experience with that particular route I, I know it's not a bad truck route uh, it's a little longer miles but it's probably what I'm gonna end up doing we'll talk about that on uh, on that video though okay all right you all have a great day uh, thanks for hanging out uh, we'll see you guys a little Mona